Well, folks, the vote to get Nelson Peltz and Jay Rasulo on the board of the Walt Disney Company and bring it back to the sensible center away from the crazy land of Iger must be so close and so razor thin that things are getting very, very exciting. And in fact, we're seeing the Walt Disney Company apparently employ tactics we never even saw coming. Today, it's time for your daily dose of dismal, dirty Disney. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages. Welcome to the channel where we explain entertainment. And by golly, we explain Disney at a level that others just imagine. Joining us to help us do so is Jonas J. Campbell, investigative reporter for That Park Place, the YouTube channel, and thatparkplace.com. Jonas, welcome back. Uh, so good to be here. When people say a uh, degree in Disney, uh, you you could, based on my academic experience, say that I actually do have a degree in Disney. Jonas, but, uh, I, I, I bestow... I bestow upon thee, I even bequeath upon thee, a PhD in Disney. Congratulations, sir. Well, thank you very much. I can have an honorary oh. credit, like the one at the end of the Cosby Show. That's right. All right, folks. Well, welcome. It's time to dive in. This is an article out of That Park Place. And folks, as we do so, click the like button. We find out who wins the vote count for the board tomorrow, Wednesday. You don't want to miss that. But uh, this, is what it, this is what we knew on the 29th of March, which was not so long ago. Wall Street Journal was reporting that Nelson Peltz may have led in votes for the Disney board seat. And fair enough. And we think this was true. And we think this was true for a very good reason. Because Disney responded to it. So Disney seemed to have validated it. We'll let you decide whether you think that's true or not. But take a look at this. It says, also according to the same article, a spokesman for Disney said leaking an early vote count was a highly inappropriate attempt to sway votes. And so, Jonas, what that indicates is that surely Disney thought it was a legitimate report, legitimate numbers that the Wall Street Journal had acquired, and Disney did not like it. And so that was on the 29th, with 20% of the vote counted. And we agreed on this, on this channel that leaking the vote count, not cool. But Disney went ahead and made this official statement. Seems to me that they thought Peltz was in the lead as well. Jonas, any disagreement there? No, no, I'm totally in agreement. All right, well, let's go to today, folks, because today things seem to have shifted, but it may be part of a very sneaky campaign. This is out of Bloomberg. We're, we're looking at it through Yahoo Finance. Disney is leading proxy fight with half of the votes counted, Wall Street Journal says. All right, so this one came out yesterday in the evening by Rob Golem over here on Yahoo Finance. But Jonas, who are the actual authors on the Wall Street Journal? Uh, Lauren Thomas and Robbie Whelan. Now, folks, the reason we're not showing you the Wall Street Journal article is because it's behind a paywall. And as part of our ethical stance here on the channel, we typically don't post entire articles that are behind a paywall. We may later on show uh, an excerpt or something like that. But this is the article out of Bloomberg where they're covering it. Walt Disney Company is leading in its proxy fight against billionaire Nelson Peltz with more than half of the votes counted. The Wall Street Journal reported citing pe people with familiar with the matter. Now, here's what it says. BlackRock Incorporated. Remember, folks, we've talked about BlackRock Vanguard. They're the two biggest investors in Disney. Disney's second largest shareholders among the major investors backing management, the newspaper said. T. Rowe Price Group Incorporated, another major investor, also plans to support Disney. There's no guarantee Disney will stay ahead, the newspaper said. Investors are still casting votes and can change them. But, folks, here's the news. Okay. Well, there's two pieces of news. We'll, we'll cover it. But here's the big one. Jonas, you've read the Wall Street Journal article. Does Disney give any condemnation to a second unprecedented vote count leak happening? They absolutely do not. That first one is very clear that the uh, the action is highly inappropriate. And the second one that's in their favor doesn't include any statement like that. So within 72 hours, and, and by the way, leaking vote counts for this kind of thing is just unheard of. This is So it's happened twice now. The first time Disney puts out a statement that seems to corroborate that the numbers are true, the second time we get a vote count, and we don't know who the source is, we don't know if it's a new source, we don't know if it's a second source, anything like that, but the second time it happens, Disney doesn't condemn it at all, and Disney gains the advantage, correct? Yes, yes. I would say that this is in, in Disney's favor. They're trying to say that, uh, no, 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 this is a done deal. All the grown-ups are, quote-unquote, uh, grown-ups are weighing in and saying, this is not okay. Now, the fascinating thing about this, too, is that we've got the announcement in this that BlackRock, Disney's second largest shareholder, is voting for Disney. 
Now, Jonas, what may be happening here, and I, I don't know, that, that this is way, way up there in terms of the uh, level of power being asserted, but if BlackRock, if BlackRock voted, which seems to me to be what is indicated, although you can never know because they can change their votes today up until just a few hours from now, but if BlackRock has voted, and if BlackRock is the second largest shareholder, and they are, then that would shift that just probably to Disney with 50% reporting, it would shift it just enough to make that kind of a narrative statement, narrative claim. But then one wonders who's left on that remaining 50% because we've seen major organizations back Nelson Peltz recently. We've got BlackRock, we've got T. Rowe Price. If they're already baked into the 50% that has voted and the 50% that has not voted or is uncounted, does not include them, I got to say that despite the headline, that forebodes very well for Nelson Peltz, I think. Jonas, correct me I, where I'm I, wrong. I, I think you're correct. Uh, two days ago, or <laughs> before the first Wall Street Journal article came out, we were obviously having this discussion. This is something we've discussed quite a bit in the back channels, as well as on, on streams and on videos. This is, none of us really thought that Peltz is going to get on the board this year. None of us really thought that he was going to get on the board this year. And we've said publicly that it's probably that he's going in for the next year instead, because this is a this is a long fight and he will have more ammunition, we believe, over the next year to say that the movies aren't hitting and, and that there's a cultural problem at the Walt Disney Company. So we all thought next year, emphasis on that. But that being said, with all of the amazing amount of firepower that Bob Iger and the Walt Disney Company have put in to try to fight him, the levels that they have gone to, and I mean going low, like these political attack ads that they've put out against Nelson Peltz and Trian Partners and uh, Jay Rasulo, I, I do not understand why they have allowed themselves to, to get into this language like, inane and dangerous and oblivious about their opponents. I think that Disney has engaged in mudslinging in order to keep Nelson Peltz off of the board because I think they understand that their argument isn't working. They're spending and they're acting as if Nelson Peltz has a chance. So in a way, it has made it seem like Nelson Peltz is going to win, not because of Nelson Peltz, although I do think he's making an excellent case, but because of Disney's incredible overreaction maybe or maybe it's not an overreaction maybe they know these figures and that's why they are scared yes i, I totally agree with you uh, jonas i think that you know we've moved up our projections as to what could happen with nelson peltz originally i was saying that he had something like a 20 to 30 percent chance and uh you know that has that has shifted dramatically in the last week or so especially after iss backed peltz which, by the way, ISS is an organization that essentially controls, we're going to put that in quotes because they don't directly, but by, you know, pragmatically, they probably do control about one third of all of Disney's institutional investor choices. So Peltz now, I think, is just absolutely 50-50. And, and, you know, this could, this could literally go either way. And I think the vote could be as close as 51-49 in either direction tomorrow. So this is going to be extremely fascinating. The other thing that's fascinating, Jonas, is how much effort Disney is putting into stopping pelts. You've been talking about that. There are reports that Disney has spent in excess of $70 million in order to try to block pelts uh, through marketing, through campaigning, all of that sort of thing. I guess employing a cartoon duck to uh, tell those who they must think are very <laughs> foolish how to vote. An imitation cartoon duck as well. They didn't even get the official voice actor for Ludwig von Drake. But uh, but Jonas, is it is it? I mean, it seems odd to me that a company is spending seventy million dollars to sway voters. It, it doesn't seem to be to be a very wise use of funds. It seems to me to be counterintuitive that you would spend money to try to uh, keep your own board in power. I just don't know if that's the way that uh, investors want Disney to spend money. What do you think about that? Seventy million dollars plus. Not, I, I, I would. First of all, I would agree that is a that is a lot of money that could be going towards paying cast members or actually uh, fixing some of the issues that they have in the parks, like the degradation of the uh, 
there, the the cash cow that uh, the Disney uh, Walt Disney Parks Orlando Resort. Sorry, I'm saying it wrong. Walt Disney World Resort Orlando. That's it. Uh, there are so many things in this company right now that need money, and this mm, iffy campaign against Nelson Peltz, who is making some very good points about the last four years of Disney management under Bob Iger, and yes, Bob Chapek was CEO, but Bob Iger was either CEO or executive chairman for only 11 months, so anytime he says, oh, it was my predecessor, he was in charge of his predecessor as well, so it doesn't ring true. I think the real problem here is that Nelson Peltz is making some very good points. And yet again, Disney is trying to cover it up with spending more money, spreading more pixie dust, and trying really hard to get headlines out there for the people who aren't really paying attention to what is going on at the Walt Disney Company. Absolutely. And uh, Jonas, if, if we're talking about how much money this has cost Disney, it's a huge number. Uh, it's one third, apparently, of what they lost on Indiana Jones with Dial of Destiny. So that gives you some idea of just how much they're they're losing and losing and losing. And just to give folks of an idea of what we're talking about, take a look at this image. This, this is at Disney Studios, right? This is at Disney Studios. What? That's yes. at the park? Well, well, we'll just leave it at Disney Studios. But, I mean, this is, this is nuts that they have went to this level. I've never seen a company do anything like this. Putting out uh, Mickey Mouse advertisements with QR codes, trying to get people to vote. Uh, in various Disney locations. This uh, allegedly from the source who sent this my way, this is not the only one. This is uh, one of a number, as one might imagine, all over Disney places. So I don't know. Disney's running scared. It will be interesting to see what happens. Jonas, as we wrap up the video today and get ready for the pro show at noon Eastern time, which by the way, we'll, we'll be having the infamous, now very famous Cabrutus uh, joining us who has been taking on uh, the gaming industry, specifically those who would like to destroy the gaming industry. But uh, the pro show, we're going to be talking more about the Nelson Peltz fight. Jonas, as we wrap this up, um, why do you think they're fighting Peltz so hard? What, what in the world does this company have that they just cannot possibly allow a moderate man such as Nelson Peltz to get anywhere near their board? You know, I, I think there's a few possible reasons. One that is continuously brought up by uh, commenters on this channel and our, our our social media is that they think there's some criminal malfeasance that will be discovered if Nelson Peltz gets on the board. And uh, I, I'll address that one in that Peltz will have an NDA and also a, a large amount of stock. So I'm not sure that he would be inclined to tank the company by having that uh, malfeasance hit the light of day, if that is the case. Uh, but of course, we don't want to. That's just speculation. Well, we don't know anything about criminal activity. <laughs> if if Peltz gets on the board and suddenly sells all his stock, Jonas, we're all going to raise a couple eyebrows on that one. <laughs> well, then, then he'll be like all the other Disney board members. That's right. He'll be of one of them. One of them. Yeah, I think that uh, <laughs> what we've seen is that as most Disney boards do after 20 years of the same CEO in office, uh, they tend to trust the CEO a little too much and rubber stamp what he's doing. Uh, that was the problem with Eisner towards the end of his tenure. His, uh, I, I think his favorite architect was on the board and maybe the principal of his son's school was on the board of the Walt Disney Company. So I think that, that Bob Iger has been in that role so long that there haven't been enough checks and balances. And they are fighting because they are so sure that Bob Iger is the only person that can run this company. And maybe with all these mergers and acquisitions, he, maybe he has made himself the only person that can run this company in its current form. But what I really think they're scared of is dissidents and actual diversity of thought on that board. So I, I fibbed a little bit, Jonas, because now you've made me want to ask one more teensy weensy little question. So let me ask it. Um, could you explain to the audience what it was that caused Eisner to leave so that they can understand the magnitude of what we're looking at right now? Well, uh, last time, <laughs> uh, Roy Disney was a member of the board while Eisner was there and, and Roy Disney famously stepped down with the Save Disney campaign saying that he uh, basically didn't think that Eisner was doing a good job. He was lowering the brand with all of these straight to DVD sequels. People say straight to video. No, it was straight to DVD. It was that recent at least. Uh, and there was a shareholders meeting immediately after institutional shareholder services endorsed uh, sorry, spoke out against Eisner, where 43% of shareholders voted to withhold on Michael Eisner. And so Michael Eisner stepped down as executive chairman of the company. So 43%. They, 
Yes, as one, they voted. One might, one might view Jonas that if Nelson Peltz and Jay Rasulo, or just Nelson Peltz, gets 43%, it will be a resounding reminder of the Eisner situation. I don't think Iger will step down, but I think that it, I think it will matter. So, is that a good place I to end it for today, Jonas? And, yes, and he's no longer executive chairman. He's just a board member, and I, I don't see him giving up that seat. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. The big cheese himself, the mousy messiah? Nay. He likes those showers and the hippos. All right, folks, that is it for today. The big day is tomorrow, but don't go away because the Pro Show is coming up at noon Eastern today, and we've got all kinds of coverage of this and the gaming industry, and we might even talk about some other spicy things. Who knows? Folks, we hope you click, click the like button, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithm, hit the notification bell, drop a comment down below, let us know your thoughts. And folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, keep having fun, and subscribe to That Park Place, bookmark www.thatparkplace.com. Hey folks, Wednesday, April 3rd is the Disney shareholders meeting where we find out if Nelson Peltz has a seat on the board or if the proxy war continues on. Coverage begins at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time with Culture Casino. Moving right over to the Pro Channel, a special edition of the Pro Show, 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Eastern. And then we go to Valiant Renegade for live coverage, 1 p.m. Eastern until who knows when. It is the big day for Disney.